All right, I think I'm starting to figure out this GoPro. At around 10 seconds on the first take, it fails. So I should just let it sit there for 10 seconds and let it fail on the first take. Second take comes around, happens around 15 seconds. Third take seems to just continue to go. So this is whenever we're gonna start. Hello everyone, how you doing today? I'm doing all right, thanks for asking. I tried making this video yesterday, but it didn't really work out well just because I was in a battle with time. Well, now I have today off and I have today to do basically whatever I want with. So I do have some new guns and I am going to show those off. But before I do that, let me address this. A buddy of mine brought up the fact that I speak in these videos like I have thousands of views, when in reality, my view count stems between 25 and 50 views with the exception of a couple of extremely popular videos that are popular by what I'm getting right now. Like my High Point Carbine video has like 8,000 views or something. But even so, I'm talking like I have, you know, thousands and thousands of views. And my buddy brought that up. He's like, dude, you only got like 20 people watching, you know. Why, why do you talk the way you do? And you know what I told him? I told him you wanna dress for the job you want, not the job you have, so. That's why I speak like I'm talking to a whole slew of people instead of just a select few. Anyway, one of the guns I have today that I'm going to show off is one that I've already shot, but it is one that I really, really like. It's a pretty cheap little handgun, which is not necessarily saying something nowadays. Cheap doesn't always mean bad nowadays. Just modern manufacturing makes it to where you can produce something really nice for not a whole lot of money. And this right here is definitely one of those cases. This is a Rock Island Armory Model 238 Special Revolver. Holds six rounds. The only thing I don't like on this is the way you open the cylinder. You gotta pull this little tab back to open it. I mean, it's not bad. It's not very much different than the push button on the Smith & Wesson I have. So, it's not too terrible. At least I don't have to pull the rod out to open it. So, that's a plus, I guess. It's, it's like a, a middle ground almost, a gray area as to whether or not I like it. I mean, there are better systems than that, but there's definitely worse systems to unload your revolver. At least I don't have to load this one round at a time. and have a ramrod to knock the empty cases out like a lot of your 40, uh, 44 Magnums have. I'm probably never gonna get one of those. Yeah, the ammunition I'm firing today is nothing special. Standard range ammo, I have Blazer Brass uh, 38 Specials. I'm not sure what the grain is on these, but I just had them sitting around. <laughs> I have my little Airweight 38 Special, but that's not very fun to shoot a bunch of, so. This rifle is, or this handgun, not rifle, is fun to shoot. Honestly, I love shooting this thing. It is both single and double action, meaning I can get a bunch of quick sh uh, shots off relatively fast, or I could uh, single action it for accuracy, which is exactly what I'm gonna be doing here. I don't need to get fast shots off, I need to get accurate shots off, so I'll be operating this single action. You know it's accurate whenever I'm able to hit targets, you know, halfway decently at 50 yards. So, pretty accurate revolver. Anyone who has watched any of my other handgun videos knows that I am just a god-awful shot with handguns. I heard Kevin screaming in the background, too. Thank you for your input, Kevin. There's like four Kevins over there. Anyone who doesn't know who Kevin is, he's my freaking peacock. I got like five of them. They're all named Kevin. Anyway, very accurate revolver, because I am able to lob these downrange and make hits with them. So, if I can do it, you absolutely can. You probably are a way better shot than I am. Anyway, these six rounds, uh, 
are dispensed relatively easily because this right here does have a whatever it's called round dispenser on it not entirely sure what you call that but i'm just going to call it the round dispenser for sake of this video this uh brass ammo does have a bit of corrosion on it so that's what got those two stuck in there this is sort of old ammo kind of anyway let's load up some more right, i'm more than sure that somebody's gonna say you know hey why'd you get a 38 instead of a 357 you know you can fire 38s from a 357 so it would make sense to get one of those versus a 38 which will not take 357 magnum shells so i'm more than sure someone's gonna ask that upon which i will just say price point this right here i bought it used at my gun store and it was cheap it was really cheap even uh, uh classic firearms has these for what 190 bucks plus shipping plus your ffl and whatnot this right here was pretty damn cheap even compared to that and yes it is used but it's in pretty good shape so for what i'm getting i'm very pleased with it i'll probably get myself a 357 at some point but for right now this is what i got so this is what i'm going to be using Uh, you know how I said I'm not good with a revolver, or not good with handguns in general? I'm not very accurate, guys. <laughs> I'm trying to not pull my shots, but I know I do that sometimes, so that's probably what I was doing here. Alright, these shells, kind of corroded, just a little bit, as you can see. Uh-oh, looks like we have ourselves. Is that, let me just double check on that. Yes, sir. That is a split case right there. All right, had ourselves a split case. Interesting. I'm not gonna put that on the revolver. I'm gonna put that on the ammunition because a lot of this is old and corroded. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not firing anything that I feel would be unsafe to fire. I got a whole bag of just corroded ammo inside that I'm not going to bother putting through a gun. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with it, but I'm definitely not going to put it through a gun. All right, here we go. I'm going to ensure that I do not pull these shots, but maybe I'm just firing high, maybe I'm firing low, I can't tell, but... I'm going to make sure I do not pull these shots. Does that count? <laughs> ah, I got it, barely, but I got it. Okay, so, I think I did all right with that. I kind of grazed the ones out there a little bit. Hell, that's, that's better than what I was doing. All right, let's get rid of these, see what they look like. All right. Yep, I'm not seeing any more split cases. I think there, there was just a corroded case that was to the point to where it couldn't withstand the pressure because these all look normal and fine. I'm not seeing any deformation whatsoever on them. Oh yeah, one thing that I do want to point out on this uh, handgun that I haven't pointed out already is this one right here, despite being a cheap revolver, does still have a uh, 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 trigger safety on it, meaning the hammer will not actually 
push the firing pin through on a primer unless the trigger is being pulled down. Let me see if I can uh, actually show you guys that. Right here is where the firing pin would normally protrude out and even as I push on the hammer it does not protrude and would not strike a primer. However, if I hold down the trigger you can very clearly see the firing pin bulge out right there. Without holding down the trigger see it coming? Without holding it down the trigger that right there just does not protrude out enough to strike a primer no matter how hard I push on this hammer. The reason that happens is because there's a little wedge in there. That wedge is actually what strikes the firing pin, not the hammer. The wedge right there. The wedge is only in position whenever the hammer is, uh, or whenever the trigger is being depressed. So the hammer itself, no matter how hard you mash it against the side of this revolver, just does not have the material mass to push that firing pin forward without the wedge there. All right, guys, I have three rounds left. Uh, I'm going to have to go get some more ammo. Like I said, this area is just stuff I had laying around, so three rounds left. I'm kind of just going to go destroy some stuff <laughs> versus lobbing them down range and probably missing. I am getting better with my handgun accuracy. That's something that I can vouch for. I've been practicing with handguns, and I mean, it does take practice. It certainly does. But I have been practicing. I've been working on not pulling which was one of my biggest issues i was always shooting uh to the right because i would pull whenever i'd pull the trigger but i had a police officer uh yeah police officer uh kind of an ex-police officer but he was a police officer and he showed me proper handgun techniques which i've been practicing on but you can't just get it like that you know you you got to practice and work on it so I've been practicing with my 45, and I've been practicing with my little Star BM, my double action air weight revolver. Now I'm going to practice with this thing as well. So, But that's not what this is going to be about. This is going to be about me just going up to something and shooting it. Like that tile right there. did not explode like I uh, like I wanted it to I mean I was just shooting the tile on the ground I was kind of hoping that it would at least shatter and you know fly around a little bit but it didn't do any of that it just kind of sat there and took it and broke apart okay well I'm out of ammo so that's about all I can say for this thing let's go ahead head inside and check it out a little more thoroughly than uh, just firing it on the range I tell you what guys, <laughs> I've been awake for so long, I think it's like 37 hours now, but I know if I don't continue to make these videos tonight, whenever I set out to make these videos, then I'm just going to put them off for another 3 or 4 days, so I'm going to continue to keep my nose to the grindstone and make these videos and then edit them and then try to get some sleep. <laughs> I don't know how well that's going to work out, but I'm going to give it my damnedest. All right, so this right here is a couple of days later. I uh, took this 38 Special out to the gun range and had some fun with it, showed it off. Now we're going to take a little bit closer look at this pistol right here. This pistol is produced by Rock Island Armory, uh, arm score basically, in the Philippines. It's an all right gun especially for the price uh classic firearms they do not sponsor me I'm gonna go ahead and say that right now they have this pistol on sale for i think it's like 186 plus shipping so great little deal for a six shot 38 special revolver of this quality as i said classic firearms does not sponsor me i just enjoy helping people find what they might want to find. This right here is an excellent pistol, especially for the price. It is the Rock Island Armory uh, Arms Corps Model 238 Special, if anyone is interested in going to look at that. 
Now, something like this is not necessarily for everyone. I mean, it's got this fake plastic rubber feeling grip on it. It sits nice in the hand. It's a well-balanced gun, but the grip is uh, the grip feels cheap. The metal on it definitely feels lighter than a more expensive revolver would feel. You 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 get what you pay for, but you get a decent working revolver. It's it's a good quality revolver for the price that you're paying at. There's not a whole lot of significant history of any real interest in the development and distribution of this revolver right here, so I'm just going to go ahead and skip over the history of that, and I'm going to take you guys, pull you back here, and show you what you can expect if you decide to pick up one of these Arms Corps 38 Specials. Alright, so, this pistol right here is, it's got a pretty decent blued finish on it. I'm actually really impressed with the finish that is on this surprisingly cheap revolver. The grip I'm not impressed with. I'm not impressed with the grip at all. However, the trigger on it is actually quite nice. Double action is a little heavy, but single action is exasperatingly crisp and very easy to get accurate shots off. As mentioned earlier, this right here is a 38 Special Revolver, meaning it does not fire 357 Magnum cartridges. Do not try loading 357s in here. This gun is also not rated for plus P. However, I have heard from several people that it can handle plus P without issue, as long as you're not, you know, taking it to the range and burning a thousand rounds of plus P ammunition through it. You should be fine. If you're going to take it to the range and practice, then practice with cheap range ammo. It's a cheap gun, use cheap ammo in it. The actual latch to open the cylinder on the revolver is right there on the side of the gun. Right there on the side of the gun. Not uh, not exactly the most convenient system, but not the most hindering either. This revolver of course does have an ejection system. As any 38 a special revolver of modern production would have right there on the barrel we have model 200 cal 38 special the front sight on this thing is pretty much a giant triangle <laughs> but then again what are all front sights but giant triangles on the front of a barrel the barrel is non-removable been pinned in place by the factory I mean you can try to remove it but I don't see any reason why you would ever want to do that here on the other side of the revolver, we have, uh, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, but that is probably the city in the Philippines that this handgun was produced at. We got a screw to take off the front cover here, serial number RIA and change, arms core logo right there on the grip. All right, well, that's about all that there is to be said about this little 38 Special Revolver. It's a cheapo revolver. I got it for basically my bed gun. <laughs> Sleep with it. Uh, I feel comfortable with the uh, the safety mechanism, the hammer safety on it. I like how the hammer will not press, or the firing pin will not press up against a primer unless the trigger is being depressed. I've already brought that up earlier. I'm not going to try to replicate that now because of improper lighting, and I know you guys probably won't be able to see it. So, that being said, you guys have already seen it. That being said, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. This right here was a whole lot of fun. I like this gun. I showed it to my father earlier. He's a big fan of old uh, uh, police looking revolvers. I don't know why. Uh, I guess it's because he used to have one and never got a chance to shoot it. It just it made him love it. So showing him that is one of the main reasons why I wanted to get this thing. I, I loved his reaction. I loved how much he loved the gun and we're probably going to take it out and shoot it and that's going to be a really good time. So that being said if you like this kind of content, go ahead, subscribe, because I do this kind of content all the time.
I do it in almost a predictable fashion. <laughs> if you would like to consider supporting me, go ahead and check out the Patreon page. I do have some pretty cool stuff going on there, including backgrounds, behind-the-scenes stuff, bloopers from things that I wasn't quite able to make work along with a couple of pieces and tidbits from my mental support pages. Very good information on those as well. If you don't think that you can support financially, that's fine. I completely understand. Don't even worry about it, guys. Go ahead and mash that subscribe button and you will definitely support me plenty. Alright, well, I'm going to go ahead and load this thing up, uh, stick it back beside my bedside stand, and get it ready for keeping me safe <laughs> for a good night's sleep so I got one more video to make and then I get to edit them for the next four hours and then I get to sleep okay so I'm gonna go do that you guys have a fantastic